Okay, we good to go? Mm -hmm. Always good to go. I'm just chilling at Canada Life Center. That's the hard hitting analysis you listen to the Level Flight podcast for. Here we go. (laughs) Jets are a brisket team, low and slow for the first few periods. And boom, an explosion of flavor in the last few minutes of the third. I'm doing all right. Uh, Better if my internet would work. (laughs) (laughs) Elliot. This is this is comedy. Um, I'm Brian. I'm joined by Connor. Hello. And Elliot. Hey, hey. Wow, that was fun. You're listening to the Level Flight Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome into episode 100 of the Level Flight Podcast. A big milestone for us. We've had some some big milestone episodes in the past, but none bigger than episode 100. As always, my name is Connor Rabchak. I'm joined today by Elliot and Brian Super excited for episode 100. We've got a lot to talk about. There's the first few days of camp, a new contract extension for Cole Perfetti, some injury news, some preseason games. Before we dive into it all, Elliot, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while, I guess, um, since the last episode. We went a little dark. When were there, you but, on last? Uh, it's been a while, that's for sure. Yeah, I thought- the McGrory, the episode 99 was just me and Connor. Um, I think it was on a live was it the, the last that, LFP maybe. live before Must we took a break? Been. End Must of season two? Probably something like that. But it's good to be back. It's good to get back into the swing of things a little bit. Brian, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, happy to start this 100-hour uh, uh, consecutive uh, episode here. We're, uh, we're going to be on for 100 consecutive hours. We're missing class tonight for this. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I should have I gone back and... Uh, Because that's the thing. The LFP has now extended from multiple residences for me. I should have gone back into my childhood bedroom in which we start. I started, you know, recording uh, set up on the floor there with nothing else on the walls because I took it all um, (laughs) and recorded 100 because that's uh, that's where it really all got started. But no, I'm doing great. It's kind of crazy, though, that we're here doing this. Yeah. 100 episodes is crazy. We maybe we should have gone back to the studio where it truly oh, yeah, all started. <laughs> As many of you know, we are all students at CMU, they have these awesome recording studios. That's where that's where we started off, but it's all led to this moment, episode 100 of the Level Flight podcast, along with the LFP lives that we were doing, some trade deadline coverage. There's been a lot, a lot of LFP content over the past two years now. Um, and let's get into the content of this episode, Cole Perfetti. We'll start there. Um, Brian, I'll start with your thoughts. Two years, 3.25 million. Not really shocking in the slightest. I guess the biggest shock is that it took this long. Um, what was your initial reaction when you saw the Darren Drager report? Two years, 3.25 million for Perfetti. Uh, I mean, first thought was, you know, it's done. You know, thank mm-hmm. God. We're, 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 we're over this now. He can get into some yeah. preseason action. Luckily, it didn't <laughs> stretch more than a few days into camp um you know the longer it went the worse it was for both team and players so uh you know the fact that it's done i think is good for everyone involved but you know i i think the thing that got me a little bit was i don't know maybe i feel like a lot of people are okay with the sort of show me contract but perfetti is a young player who clearly has a lot of talent he's probably going to you know take a step at some point in the next year or two here and then probably going to be more expensive than the 3.25 he was so incredibly willing to extend long term and the jets didn't even offer it once to him and for an organization that has struggled mightily to get and keep young talented players uh not even giving that opportunity a look was kind of puzzling to me but yeah Mm -hmm. overall just happy it's done next you know couple years we can just watch cold you know actually blossom into the player he hopefully should be and stay healthy and you know that's that's all i'm looking forward to Mm -hmm. elliot what were your initial thoughts i mean i agree with everything that brian said and i think his next contract is going to be an even bigger raise than than we might think um because you know you look at the points per 60. I believe in the player, believe in the opportunities that he's going to get over the next two years. What was your initial reaction to the deal when Darren Dreger reported it and then it became official? 
Elliot. Same thing with Brian. It was just like, <laughs> sorry, I was wouldn't like, be LF... yeah. Yeah. It, No, it's all good. It wouldn't be LFP without technical difficulties. Um, it's same same thing as all. Same thing as Brian. I mean, it was just like thank God it got done. I mean, I wish the Jets at least tabled him a long term offer. I think that he would have been way more receptive to that, and they could have worked off of the initial offer. But it is what it is at this point. Let's just let it ride. Let's see what happens in two years. I understand. Like, I I will always be an advocate for somebody like that who's young, who has lots of potential, that you want to take that. I, I like to use the Atlanta Braves as the best example of that, where they really like to lock up their young players on cheap deals and just let it ride. And then once, if you can get them at that cheap number, get them at that cheap number. But I get it from the Jets' perspective too, right? This is a player that had two injuries riddled seasons in a row mm-hmm. was technically I like he didn't play all 82 games, but he totally could have. He was healthy enough to, mm-hmm. but had very much a felt like more so true rookie season where he was up and down. So I get the jets coming into this going, okay, well, we're willing to pay you like a big boy NHL player, but at the same point, you know, you've been inconsistent. So I, I get it. I get from the jets perspective, you're wanting to make sure that you aren't, like putting cap space towards a player that's only going to play, let's say like quote unquote 50 games a season or something like that. Or Perfetti's just kind of topples tops out at his current number. And so I I get it. You want to maximize what you got, but at the same point, this is a player that wants to stay in the city and that's been so hard to find. And so Mm -hmm. that's where it's, it's a duality, right? And I think we're always going to have that humming and hawing, but at the end of the day, like you said, Connor, if he ends up signing for long term in two years, mm-hmm. won't matter. We, nobody will care anyways because they will stay here anyways. Sorry, sorry, I'm laughing at your use of humming and hawing. That's uh, that was solid. Um, <laughs> I I do think, and David Pagnotta was on Winnipeg Sports Talk the day after the contract, and Elliot Freeman was on Kenny and Rennie the day after the contract was signed as well. Both insiders were you know, reiterated the point that Cole Perfetti wants to be in Winnipeg long-term still. And there was no animosity that came out of these negotiations. Um, I saw some people freaking out about that online, that old Chevy really grinded out every last dollar and it could have fractured a relationship. I don't think you have anything to worry about with that. Perfetti has been very, very adamant that he loves the organization, the city playing here, etc. And I know we just went through, and the organization just went through the whole Rutger thing where, you know, he said all the right things, but then still left. I think this is this scenario is different. This is a guy who's played here for three years. And yeah, Elliot, go ahead. No, I was just going to, I didn't want to interrupt you because I wanted to add on to that. I was curious about the contract and I wanted to see where it fell in terms of what his rights were once his contract is over. I think another thing that people need to remember that he is still an RFA after this two-year deal for sure so the jets in the end too you have to look at it as a positive as yes they didn't lock him up long term but they signed him for two give him the prove it deal if he plays well then you sign him long term and what's done is done or if he isn't playing well or he's injured or whatever you would think at 25 an rfa if the jets i don't i'm not putting this out there to like Pray on Cole Perfetti's downfall, but I think both of you know where I'm going. If the Jets do need to trade him or they want to use him as a piece in a different trade, like in a trade, because it just isn't working out anymore after that two year deal, in the worst mm-hmm. case scenario, they can still do that. It's not like he's a, a UFA and then he yeah. just walks in free agency and the two year deal was useless. At least yeah. here, the Jets still retain some sort of team control and it's, it's at least a better situation than what could have happened if you had been a UFA after the two years for sure. And, uh, and we'll see because like Scott O'Neill said, and like was the case last year with Rick bonus until Perfetti hit the wall and then struggled to get back into the lineup. He's going to be in the top six. He's going to be on that second line wing. He's going to be on the second power play. Um, and those aren't, you know, premier opportunities, but if he gets played like a true second line player, not a sheltered second line player, or even at times a sheltered third line player was the case last year. Um, He will produce. And and this is a player that I think can have 40 for easily. He had 40 points last year, almost in 70 games. He could have 50, 60 points if he truly, truly breaks out and gets that opportunity. So the jets are taking the wait and see approach again. I I'm an advocate. And I think we all are that we would have liked 
to see a long-term deal, but this isn't terrible either for a player who has had injury issues in the past. Like you said, Elliot, we are going to get into more training camp storylines, but first we're going to hear a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp, um, and we will be right back with some news from Jets training camp. This episode of the Level Flight Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's something you'd love to learn? A new language? How to skate? About a subject you're interested in? Do you make time to learn new things as often as you'd like, or was that lost in childhood? As kids, we have that inherent curiosity to learn new things as we grow, but it isn't something we always hold on to as we shift into adulthood. Therapy can help you to reconnect with your sense of wonder, because your back-to-school era can come at any age. Therapy is something that isn't exclusive to people who have experienced trauma and can be a valuable way to work through your needs that are specific to you. It can help establish healthy habits, coping skills, and allow you to reframe some of your own viewpoints on your experiences to become the best version of yourself that you can be. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash THPN today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash THPN. Welcome back in to episode 100 of the Level 5 podcast. That still feels weird to say <laughs> um, that we are at this moment, but... There was training camp, there was preseason games, there was skates, there was a whole weekend's worth. As we are recording this, it's Wednesday afternoon, so the Jets are going to be playing tonight. Um, this episode's going to be coming out Thursday morning, I would assume. So this this will be old news. We won't be talking about the Jets-Oilers game that you all know happened. But over the weekend, there was some news. You know, Billy Hanala skated with Colin Miller in the first day of practice, kind of pegged for that third-pairing role alongside Colin Miller the very next day, he wasn't out there. Maybe it was the flu bug. We weren't sure. We asked Scott O'Neill, and it was unfortunately found that there was an infection in his ankle that he got surgically repaired last year. Uh, just terrible, terrible luck for Billy Hanala. And uh, another year where he was he was slotted for an NHL opportunity, and he's not going to get it, at least for the medium to long term. They don't know the timeline yet. Um, when there is a timeline, I'm sure it'll be made publicly available, but Really, really devastating news on Billy Hanala. Brian, what was your initial reaction to the news of Hanala and kind of analyzing it from an, an on ice impact perspective going forward? Where are the Jets at on that third pair? Well, I mean, the, the first thing for me was I just felt gutted for him because, you know, he had worked, you know, you went, you went to the point of saying how hard he worked last year. And then obviously it was cut short and then he didn't get back until late last year. And then to come into camp with a clear shot at, you know, winning that spot on that third pairing and getting that chance on day one to be next to Colin Miller and only to have everything shut down again for him. Uh, it's I, I, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Like yeah. it's, it is truly one of those situations where you can't, you know, look at him and not just almost feel bad for him because it's, you know, he, he gets these opportunities and then, you know, stuff like this happens where, you know, he probably got on the ice and felt something after day one. They checked it out and there was the infection. And it's, as you said, it's not a short term thing. Like it's going to take a while to really clear up. And, you know, on, you know, the on ice side of things, it lowers the immediate upside of the defensive group so much because mm -hmm. whether it's Logan Stanley or a Hayden Fleury or a Dylan Coughlin or whoever else, no one has the offensive upside that. Vili Hainala would have brought. No one has the puck moving or the skating as much as that. So immediately the upside of that defensive group, especially that third pairing, just isn't there anymore. And it's going to be kind of an uphill battle to find that level of you know skill that they really have struggled to find over the last few years. I I couldn't agree more. And it it was so unfortunate because Nate Schmidt, we saw it last year, was a puck moving defenseman. Uh, a veteran and you know maybe underrated defensively over these years in Winnipeg but it we saw the path and kind of the blueprint to third pairing success for a puck moving defenseman um and you were hoping that Vili Hanala could just pick up right where Nate Schmidt left off or even a fraction of what Nate Schmidt um was able to do last year because last year I mean when he was in he was effective the Jets coaching staff didn't think so they kept rotating him in and out of the lineup went out and got Colin Miller things like that 
But yeah, Dylan Sandberg moves up to that second pair, leaving a hole on that third pair left D and, uh, and Logan Stanley slotted to now fill it for the time being till Ville Hainala gets healthy. Elliot, where are you at? Very similar to Brian with the, the capped upside of that blue line now. Yeah, I, it's, it's the same thought. Um, it's tough because I, it, it's tough for Villy because last year, yeah. obviously we knew there was going to be a battle for that sick fifth, six D spot. He won the battle and mm-hmm. he fought hard for it. And then it gets cut this year. He was the clear, like I, I'm, I'm obviously it wasn't made public, but it was pretty apparent with the way that Scott O'Neill was presenting Billy in what drills and where he was placed that he was the front runner. He was the one that it was his job yeah. to lose. And so it just sucks that he obviously is now out. And I hope that we don't have a similar situation to last year where that's just kind of it for him. Um, I'm hoping that this just means that whoever's there is the filler until he's back and healthy. And then he's, he gets his shot right away, but we we will have to wait and see for that in terms of the upside for that, for the third D pairing. I'm kind of at a place where, you know, there's personally for me, I think there's two options. I like option one a bit more than option two. Obviously neither of them are better than, villy in any Mm -hmm. way like even like floor or upside purposes but just as filler i think depending on how long villy is out i think they'd be good enough unless it's this is like gonna be a while like a while when i mean a while yeah yeah. um but yeah there there's technically three options i think there's two that the jets really should be looking at um and we can go into that if we want to um but we'll have to wait and see they seem to be favoring one over the other so far which is making mm-hmm. me believe I think they're going to go with one over the other. But again, it's still early in preseason. Yeah. And, you know, Logan Stanley is what we're saying could be the third parent guy and is most likely to be a third parent guy. Could be Hayden Fleury um, or it could be Dylan Coughlin on his offside on that third pair. If the, if he really impresses in camp, um, they do have depth defense options and it'll be interesting to see who they go with uh, at least to start the season in Edmonton on October 9th. A, a couple other things from training camp uh, yesterday, Scott O'Neill mentioned that Connor and Mark Shifley are going to kill penalties this year and potentially even Nikolai Ehlers uh, on Nikolai Ehlers. He's also on the top unit kind of in that high slot bumper position. Um, and, and, there was some confusion yesterday. Uh, Mark Shifley wasn't in the bumper at, predominantly. It was mostly Nikolai Ehlers. Nikolai Ehlers also spoke to the media, and the the line of questioning was very much um, about him learning how to play in, in the high slot and learning from Sebastian Ajo and Patrice Bergeron and those guys that play in the middle of the power play. Um, so Mark Shifley was in the bumper at times and Nikolai Ehlers was on his usual half wall, you know, curl out of the zone, take a pass and just fly with speed down the wing. Um, but I think it's going to be Nikolai Ehlers in the middle of the ice on the power play to start the season. Maybe they'll interchange during the power play. That's a big thing that they're emphasizing is movement on the power play. So you might see multiple guys in that spot on the same power play. Um, but what do you guys think? I want to ask about the penalty kill. The, the decision to kill with Shifley, Connor, Ehlers, these skilled forwards who haven't done it in the past. Um, Kyle Connor does a little bit um, or did a little bit last year with Rick Bonus, but Shifley predominantly did not. Nikolai Ehlers has never killed penalties for the Winnipeg Jets as far as I can remember. Um, Brian, I'll start with you. What do you think of that decision? And do you think it'll pay off for the Jets who had a pretty bad penalty kill last year? Yeah, that's the thing. The, the floor of where it was last year is, you know, kind of easy to clear a little bit. So, (laughs) I I mean, I I do appreciate the concept of bringing in more skilled forwards to try and be more aggressive. You know, a lot of teams in the NHL use the power kill method where they almost try to, you know, turn it into more of an offensive opportunity that if they can break up a pass, they can break out, right? So I I, I like that concept. I mean, I need to see it in action to see how, you know, Connor and Shifley in a penalty kill system function because, you know, At five on five, they've both struggled mightily defensively. Um, But, you know, it's going to be more structured in the sense of what their roles are specifically. So, I mean, if they are planning on going that aggressive, you know, route there and, you know, following in, I mean, to a lesser extent of what Carolina does, because Carolina is, I think, the 
the ones that take the power kill to the extreme. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I think that it's a better option as to what they did last year, which was just stand and hope you don't die because it was yeah. essentially just uh, if you can get in front of a shot, great. Keep them outside. Don't move a whole lot and let them come at you. Right. So this is a For better sure. I think this is a better alternative, regardless of sort of personnel. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it in action as the season progresses. Yeah, me as well. Elliot, what, what did you think of both the penalty call and then the decision to use Ehlers on power play one in that kind of high slot role? I mean, you and I spoke about it yesterday about mm -hmm. Shifley and Connor on the penalty kill. I think it's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. I think more so for my, my thought process is more so that if you're going to use it, you use it in spurts. Don't use yep. them as your top unit. Like I would hope that a Lowry Baron unit or if they want to go Lowry Appleton or whoever, Lowry, whoever else is their first unit that goes out and kills the first minute 15. Great. Or, yeah. you know, you get a neutral zone face off. You throw Shifley and Connor out there. You luckily maybe get an offensive zone draw. You throw mm -hmm. those two out there. I think it's more to me. I think if you're going to see them, it's more of that situational sort of kind of deployment instead of like, hey, this is your first unit and you're going to be out there for a minute. No, I think this is more of a situationally or late in the power play if the opposing team has thrown out their unit for the last minute and a half and hasn't changed. And you can get the Shifley Connor duo over the boards and get some tired legs. I think. Mm -hmm. I think this yeah. is more of a strategic thing than anything. I'm curious to see with Ehlers in on that front because we've seen him be always on the outside. That's more to yeah. his strength. I don't know. Like, yes, I will always be that person that says, "Oh, Mark Shifley should be the bumper and nobody else," unless it's somebody who's really that net front presence guy. Mm -hmm. Right, like trying to deflect pucks or trying to be a screen or whatever other team. Like I know there's other other roles that that bumper spot yeah, can yeah. have. I'm just we haven't really seen Ehlers like that spot is more for guys who have been better hand eye coordination and guys that are good in scoring in front, like mm -hmm. in scoring in tight er spaces. Obviously not like what we've seen Gabriel Velarde do behind the net. Um, but that bumper spot to me is more about tight spaces, banging home rebounds, being able to get stick on puck and being able to make deflections. We haven't really seen like anytime Ehlers has really been in tight, like unless it's a deke and he's got speed, I'm not sure what they yeah. like, unless there's some sort of like something they're going to run through him there. Like, I don't know if this is like you yeah. said, there's movement where he's in front, they get a couple puck reversals around and then him and Shifley like do some sort of flip or something to make the defenseman guard two. And then he either comes out maybe for a, for a one timer or they go down low Velarde and they're so worried about Ehlers coming out that Shifley's open in the bumper. I don't know, but mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I think there'll be so much movement that, I wouldn't say that that's his only role on the, like, I know obviously he's going to be a big part of the entries. I think we'll see him on that half wall where we've usually seen him more often than we might think. Um, but they did start that first unit with him in that spot. So it'll be interesting to see, like you said, how often he's there. Um, I don't think there's anything else from training camp. I think we're going to move on to our, our next ad read, which is DraftKings, And then later on, we're going to talk about, you know, it's 100 episodes. We're going to look back at the last 100, some LFP lives. We're going to talk about kind of the future of the LFP, the schedule for the upcoming year, and some of our favorite moments from the show and, and the past 100 episodes. And we we thank everyone who listens to the show, who's listening to this episode, has stuck with us through 100 episodes. Um, the support has been awesome, awesome, awesome. So I am I'm looking forward to this next discussion where we're going to talk about all of our favorite moments. But first, a word from DraftKings. TD, Tunny, taking it to the house. Whatever you call a touchdown, they matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours.
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Pre- Premium offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus premium terms at NFL.com slash terms. And welcome back into episode 100. I have a new favorite moment. It's Brian saying Tutty. That, that's my new that's my <laughs> touchdown. Tutty. I love it. I love it. Um, but no, let's let's talk about a hundred episodes. Um, we'll talk more about the, kind of the schedule and what what the LFP is going to look like this upcoming Jet season later on. But I first want to start with just some of our favorite moments from the last hundred episodes. Um, Elliot, I'll start with you. Do you have one off the top of your head that that looking back on it was one of your favorite moments? Recording clips, whatever whatever it might have been. I don't know if I have a specific moment because there's been lots of times where I've like gotten off and gone, man, that was. That was interesting, or that was so much fun, or whatever. Um, I know it's at the expense of the rest of us, but I will say the days that we've that especially the early days when we had tech issues, those were those had to be some so of the funniest let me, ones. Let me but... bring up one of mine because Brian and I once did an episode together where my Wi-Fi would cut out probably <laughs> like every seven minutes. So we were we were like racing against time to get seven minutes of podcast content done before my internet cut out i reset it reset everything and then i had another like seven minutes and it it, it took all afternoon and it if was i like, recall correctly too we were talking about a fairly serious topic that episode too yes we were talking about the chicago blackhawks kyle beach thing that's when that happened and yeah. it was like terrible like we we needed to get through it and talk yeah. about it yeah um, that recording and- session took probably close to two hours yeah, it was ridiculous. I guess that's not one of my favorite moments. Then looking back, I mean, on looking it, back and, on it, like the uh, I guess there's yeah. there's clips of me uh, that I f- I found the recording of that where there's yeah. clips of me uh, essentially just I'll be in the middle of a sentence and then I'll see you freeze, but I'm not 100 <laughs> percent sure if you're frozen, so I keep talking and then you drop <laughs> and I freak out. Yeah. Oh, what a time that was! What a time that was, Brian. Are there any other other uh memories looking back on it that uh that you're fond of i mean there's there's two that stand out to me uh one of which being the the moment where we switched to digital recording um Mm. because i remember very clearly the only reason we did that is because i forgot to book the studio and we're like okay let's try and use the stream yard thing we've never used it before we have not recorded in the studio since. No, <laughs> no. Um, we never went back. There's that. And then um, there's a moment that I remember very clearly. And I think, I don't know if I, it's in the intro. It might be, but it was, <laughs> we were in the middle of an episode. I put something in the little private chat to try and come up with a plan. I think it was to like when we were taking an ad break um, and Connor clearly did not look at the chat. He just, he just rolled right into the next topic and I just responded with, okay. And <laughs> then he looked at the chat and lost it. And we, yeah. we kept it in because it was funny. But no, I remember that. But no, like even just like going back, I listened to the first episode uh, recently. Um, yeah. Oh. That, uh, it's a tough Too listen, but wow. It's a it's a tough listen. I mean, we, we've come a long way. Yeah. I mean, that. you started the, uh, the episode with uh, consisting of myself <laughs> myself oh man well, I mean, what a, let's, what let's be real though that took place in our second year at cmu yeah uh, oh yeah which you know now we're in our fourth and fifth years you know with our courses and everything here now so it's uh it's been a while and i had yeah. never i personally had never been i had never talked about the jets or hockey or anything on like a podcast or on like while being recorded like you talk to the about the jets to your family members and your friends all the time but you don't do it when there's a mic in front of you and you're like trying like it's, it's just a different different mindset and man i i still haven't gone back and listened to episode one 
no, because me I know it, it's it's worth listening to just to see where we are now. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, it's, it's the journey but... we leave behind us that's the most important. It's the friends we made along the way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I I will say another one of my favorite moments was my first year covering the moose. Um, the only time we could record like all week was like Wednesday at eleven. And for some reason, the one moose practice I went to like all year long at Canada Life Center, like they practiced at the, the Iceplex Hockey for All Center. But I went to one at Canada Life Center and you guys were about to record. Um, and I was like, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. So you guys started recording. And oh, I yeah. Joined, <laughs> I joined like halfway through. And it's it's in the intro where I go, I'm just chilling at Canada Life Center. Like I was just like, yeah, I'm just ready to record at Canada. It was in like an empty rink. Again, this was early on. Um, and I was like, this is this is weird. Recording a yeah. podcast in it just in the seats in an empty well, and, the, and you I'm just the Canada Life Center. Yeah, yeah, one either Brian or I were speaking, and then you just joined and I Brian like <laughs> oh hold on, Connor's hold joined. On. <laughs> yeah. we, we need to reset here. And so yeah. then, like, we kept, we and kept again, it all we, in. Yeah. Yeah. We kept it all yeah. in and we just reset. And we're like, okay, now it's all three of us. Let's, let's do this. So let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Is there anything else off the top of our heads that, uh, I, I'm sure that people will come back with us and remind us of stuff. But I, yeah, I can't think of anything else. It's just, it's been so much fun to do these episodes. They've always been super, super great. I can't ask for two, any better co hosts to do this with. Same. I'm, so it's it, it's just been a blast. I hope we can keep doing more. Um, I don't know if that's a well, segue. Let's, <laughs> let's segue. Yeah. Wow. We're all about the segues. That's five years of communications degrees worth wow. right there of, a, of, of segues. 15 combined years. How about that? Of, of communications and degree. i have a diploma so <laughs> oh true yeah so, true w- true so wouldn't that be 17 18 something like that then uh mine was just a year so oh why did uh, i think okay. it was two okay no uh 16 years so, yeah. combined of communication that extra year degrees. and and yet here we are still still <laughs> still figuring out how away. to segue segue <laughs> topics anyways um i'll let brian lead off this conversation the the lfp in short, is going to be taking a little bit of a step back this year um, in terms of, you know, last year we did the two weekly episodes plus a live. Um, we're, we're all pretty busy this year um, as it is our fifth year of school. Um, Elliot has got some some stuff going on. I've got a ton of stuff going on. Brian as well. We're all, we're all pretty busy. So I'll let Brian kind of lead off what the plans are for the LFP this season. Yeah, uh, you, you said it well, where it's just things are so busy now that it's hard to commit to all three of us being available or even two of us at this point available yeah, to free do time. like <laughs> weekly or two weekly recordings um but in short uh lfp live uh after you know doing it for a few months at least for right now is on hold um mm-hmm. you know for uh, a few different reasons it's just it's not something that you know, make sense for us for the upcoming season, at least for the time being, Um, you know, that might be a, and in the future thing we revisit depending on how things go. Um, And then it looks like likely might not be as consistent of a, of a release schedule um, in terms of, you know, weekly things. I'm going to try and get a weekly episode up um, whether that's with, you know, however many of us that we can get on there Um, If there's two of us, it'll probably just be us. Maybe it'll just be, you know, one of us having to, you know, uh, host a guest. We're going to try and get some Mm -hmm. more guests on this year. Um, You know, we might change up some of the content we put out there. Like we might just put out some standalone videos that aren't actually podcast episodes, but Mm -hmm. more of, you know, just content in general um, because it's easier to bank that type of thing. And it takes a little bit of weight off of us, you know, to try and really stay up to date on things. So you know, maybe we we record a, a a video or we somehow find a time where all three of us are available. We we dive back into the trivia world. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you know uh, whether it's myself or whoever does a, a video where it's just a solo video breaking down something that happened. You know, in the season. You know, talking yeah. about you know you know more nostalgic things like you know you know ranking the best you know jets of the last you know ten years, whatever, like things like that giving us a bit of an option to stay active and stay interactive in this community that we've you know managed to build here 
um, while not being you know obligated to be available at the same time weekly or twice a week. Um, because for the first time in a couple of years here, um, for the most part, there really isn't a day where all of us are off yeah. at the same time. We've yeah. been very, very lucky the last couple of years where uh, our schedules have lined up enough to at the very least have two of us off at the same time. Um, and it's just, it's, it's not how it's working this year. And, you know, with, that's the thing with, you know, you guys have another term after this too. I'm done, you know, I'm, I'm finishing up this fall. Uh, and then who knows sort of the, the timing and everything, but you guys are taking mm -hmm. more classes. You guys have work, you know, Connor, mm -hmm. you've got your, your other commitments now. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, Elliot, you've, you know, you've expressed to me too, where you'll try to hop on both of you have, uh, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's, there's no guarantees anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, at least so for the time I, being, for at least for the time being. Yeah. Like this is a, I, I think it's going to be more of a temporary thing in terms of us feeling things out because who knows, maybe later this year or into the new year, we find a way to kind of line things up a little bit better and we can come back a little bit more, but at least for the first well, the better half of the first part of the season. Um, it's going to be a, a bit of a step back. And I, I know a lot of you it really came to love our recording schedule. Um, mm -hmm. It became you know a big thing and it uh, allowed us to grow uh, immensely over the, over the last year, especially since uh, you know, we entered 2024. Um, it was essentially every quarter we were just growing so much and, you know, it, it's, it's tough for us to take a step back because we, we saw that growth so much, but, you know, ultimately, if we tried to get that done, it would be a lot of repetitive content and you would probably only see one of us a week. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, that's I think that's kind of where we're at on it right now. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have, you know, thoughts on the matter that you'd like to share. Um, you yeah. Know, sort of where where we're going with it. Yeah, I, I think you summed it up perfectly. You know, who knows what it'll look like even in the next term when you are graduated, Brian, um, I'm scheduled to graduate next spring, Elliot within the next year as well, I believe next fall. Um, so we're, we're all graduating soon. So that's why it's not like th this isn't a, Oh, LFP is taking a step back kind of forever. Maybe it's just the first three months of the season. And then the LFP is dead. The <laughs> no, no, it's not. This is not a, no funeral. one clip that. Um, <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe in the winter term, we have more time. Maybe next year when um, we're graduated, we're like, Hey, we've got all this free time. Let's really dive into it and grow the LFP. And, and like Brian alluded to, we don't want to kind of have one foot in and one foot out when it comes to the LFP. Like if we can't do the two a week plus a live, um, then we're not doing everything we can with with the LFP and the brand that we've built over the last couple of years. So it does suck to take a step back. We'll still be here if there's big news or if we can all find the time to record or like Brian said, if maybe he's able to find a guest um, and, and bring someone on, that would be super fun as well. So it's not again, it's not a funeral, but it's it's a step back for now. Um, and hopefully we're able to to grow it. A little bit more in the in the upcoming year maybe with some more time less school on our plate um and more time to dedicate to the brand and, and growing it We're kind of replicating that growth that we saw at the start of this year um i think that's that's about everything unless oh last thing that we all forgot we interviewed danny jilkin and none of us yeah. mentioned oh that yeah in favorite moments we interviewed a player on the manitoba moose and none of us said that that's, so that's pretty cool <laughs> but i'll say it my favorite moment, one of my favorite moments of the show, interviewing Danny Jokin. Yeah. I was thinking of that when Brian Brian was kind of summing up the future of the LFP. I was like, we <laughs> talked to Danny Jokin and no one said anything. But <laughs> but uh, but here we are. Um, that's going to do it for episode 100. We're nearing 40 minutes here. Thank you to everyone who, who listened to this episode, who stuck around to the end, heard us talk about our favorite moments and, and the future of the, of the LFP and our schedule going forward. We really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button, the subscribe so you don't miss the content we do put out this year, um, even though it might be a little bit more irregular than the past few Jets seasons. I'm Connor. That's Elliot and Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the 100th episode of the Love of Fly podcast. We'll see you when we see you, and we hope that you return when we do. Have a good couple weeks, everyone. Enjoy the start of the Jets season, and we will see you on the Love of Flight socials at Love of Flight WPG. See ya. Hey!